Hi everyone, you would think it would take me less than an entire year to make part two of my Verb Conjugator series, but life has been incredibly busy and I haven't had any free time. I also got a bit daunted at the prospect of making the series because I realised instead of making three simple short videos like I had intended to, this was going to take a bit longer. Fortunately, however, I focused on my Aguere grammar series, which goes into details of the nuts and bolts of verbs in far more detail. There's videos for the present tense, future tense, subclasses, uh, vowel changes, consonant, suppletion, all of that kind of stuff, which is really necessary to understand how verbs work in Aguere. It also means that I don't have to explain constantly how my verbs work as part of this verb conjugator series, I can just funnel people to the relevant uh, video, or the respective video for whatever I'm talking about. I've decided that this series is going to be a little bit different. You notice that my microphone, I'm not trying to keep this out of focus anymore. It's going to be a bit more of a workshop. Instead of me just saying, here's what I made and here's how you can do it too, we're going to work through it bit by bit. I've wanted to do some kind of a workshop series for a while anyway. Uh, the way that I think I'm going to do this is just, we're going to see how far we get in every video. I'm not going to feel like I need to stick to a certain time limit or that I need to accomplish something by the end of the video, we're just going to kind of work through it and then see how far we get. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out how we want our verb conjugator to look. So I'm going to rename this uh, verb conjugator to keep it simple. Now we're going to be looking at verbs, oh hello, we're going to be looking at verbs in the active mood, in the present tense you'll remember that there are three persons and two numbers, so we're going to fill this in first, second and third singular first, second and third plural, um, and then what we can do is we can have the present tense, future tense, the past perfect, and the past imperfect. At some point later, we can then take this and, you know, have all our passive forms over here, and then have um, our negative forms over here, so I'm just going to quickly and negative something, negative something, negative something, negative past imperfect, and then I can take this, copy it, and put it over here, passive verbs. Um, I would say I'm not going to worry about the formatting, but I'm not that kind of a person, so I am going to worry about the formatting, and I'm going to put it there. The other thing that we need to do for our verb conjugator is we need to basically have like an input. So if what I want to be able to do is to say for the verb to create, I want to type in to create, and then I want all of the forms to appear naturally. So aras, arabe, are, um, etc. Right? But there are tons of verbs. Some of them are regular, some of them are irregular, some of them are consonant subclasses, some of them are regular subclasses. All of these take different endings and add different bits to different bits to form the verb. So we need a dictionary of our verbs. I'm going to open up another sheet, put it in 16 times New Roman. I just like times New Roman, that's the only reason. We're going to call this dictionary. First things first, we need our English form to create. We then need our Aguere form, which is Arav. Now, I don't actually like that, so I'm going to go to this other sheet, copy and paste the the sound and put it back there. So this is, more accurately, this is the English infinitive. This is the Aguere infinitive. Now refer to the Aguere grammar series, you'll know we need a citation form. So Aguere citation form, which consists of the infinitive, as well as, insert three more boxes here, it has the present third person singular, so are, and what I can do for the citation form is I can say that this box should have the infinitive and the third person singular, but you'll see if I do that there, there isn't a comma and a space, so I'm going to need to add in a little thing here, text string of a comma and a space, I put uh, double speech marks around it to tell it that it's ended, and then put another little add. So what I've done is I've added this plus the comma plus the third singular. Give me add a, add a as part of the citation form. I'm also going to make this bold. Another part of the citation form is the present first person plural, which is arason, and I'm going to add that here. 
here as well. So D2. And finally, we have the past perfect first person singular, which is I need to copy and paste my this sign again. Arades. Add this form here as well. So that gives us the citation form. Next thing we need to know is whether the verb is regular. Um, and I'm just going to have to tell it that it's regular. Um, and then I need to know what subclass it belongs to. We know which subclass it belongs to by looking in infinitive. So what we're going to tell it is if the right two characters are equal to Oh, hang on, I'm going to have to copy and paste my thing again. Give me a second. So we're going to tell that equals if the right two characters of B2 are equal to av, then this belongs to the 1A subclass. OK, so it does belong to the 1A subclass. Now we're going to give our 1B verb to kill, which is Bereav, Bere, Berason, Bevreas. And we're going to drag this formula here for the citation form because that's not too tricky. Yes, this is regular. The problem we run into if we try and use the same formula here is that it's going to look at the last two characters of Bereav and think that Av is the ending for 1B verbs when it isn't av is the ending for 1B verb. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this formula and we're going to make another formula um, which says that if the three characters are av, then it belongs to the 1B subclass. Um, the reason we're putting the av before av is the formulas work sequentially. So if we say check the last two characters and if they're a that belongs to 1a and then we tell it later check the last three characters and if it's a that belongs to 1b it's by this point it's already determined that this verb matches the criteria to be a 1a verb and so it's going to say it's 1a so that's why you have to switch them around um we found a typo i usually just accept typos and then see what that gets us and look that works so it's correct it told us that to kill is a 1b verb now we're going to do the same thing for the 2a and 2b so um, oh, copy and paste my the symbol, and we're gonna go to feel, Colbeef, Colbe, Colbeson, Colbees, um, and to live, which is Verev, Vere, Verison and uh, very this citation form formula I can just go here are they regular yes both of them are regular now we need to take this and add on a little thing that says so if the infinitive ends in eth it belongs to the 2a subclass and if the last two characters eth it belongs to the 2b subclass now we've done our one and twos, we need to do our three. So the three A example to begin, which I'm going to need to copy and paste the symbol for. I feel like that's just going to be half of the series, me copying and pasting the, the symbol. So that away. Varosom. Var. I think it's Varus is the past perfect first singular. If anyone's wondering how I know all of these forms, it's because I took my own advice and I've learned my conlang as I go. Begin uh, to sleep. Soreoth, Soreos, no, that's Soroe. Hmm. Spoke too soon. Soruson and uh, Soreothes? It might be irregular, I can't remember for Soreoth. In fact, I'm almost certain that it's irregular, but never mind. Uh, we can change that. 
at some point. So now we change this formula to say that if the right two are both, it belongs to the 3A subclass. And if the right three are aoth, it belongs to the three B subclass. How many brackets do I need? I don't know. Cool. So now we have automized the process of giving our dictionary the infinitive, and then it will tell us the subclass. Now what we need to do is we need to tell it how to give us the stem and there's a few different kinds of stems in Agere, so we're just going to call this the stem for now, and then once we get into more complicated stems, we can refine the name. So what I want to say is... Um, if this is 1A, give us... this... starting at 1... Um, Length B2 minus 2. Hey, it worked! Okay. Now, Arav, Kobi, Vere, then Varud, you form all of these stems by taking the infinitive and chopping off the last two characters. So I can put in a little thing here that says if the verb belongs to the 1A subclass, or the 2A subclass, or the 2B subclass, or the 3A subclass, um, cut off the last two letters, so that works for those subclasses, and then I need to find the value of false function, copy and paste that, if it belongs to the 1B subclass or the 3B subclass um, then chop off the last three I think does that work? Woo! Okay, so there we go now we've worked out how to get our stems and that might actually be a good place to stop this video in the next video, what I think I'm going to do is try and find out how we can take our stems and then add the appropriate endings onto them. So, see you then.